Okay, hey everyone, it's John. So a couple of weeks ago now, uh, Paul Vanderclay released a video talking about there is some stuff with Ian McGilchrist in there and then Hobath and then conversations around autism and why autis autistic people don't connect with these right th brain uh, things so much. And it was really interesting. And I saw myself reflected a lot in it because um, I have Asperger's syndrome and you can go back to the one of the videos on my channel, which hopefully I'll remember to link below to discuss more about that specifically. But I just had a few thoughts in the light of what Paul and uh, HOMAP were talking about specifically in in these right brain tastes. Like, for, first of all, <laughs> it's it's funny. So the uh, HOMAP, that channel is really intellectual candy for me because <laughs> it's it really breaks down things in a way that I can understand. And it totally makes sense why this guy who created this channel would be autistic. And I totally get what PVK means when he says that, well, he knows women, but does he really know a woman, you know? The sub air versus conocer, you know, uh, propositional versus participatory knowing per se. And that was really insightful. And I thought I could bring out a few more things of that. And specifically the, 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 the part about music, what Homath said there is I don't get music. Like he didn't get music growing up as a kid. And so he saw other people, what other people were into and had to try to infer logically of why these people liked this or that sort of from this personal perspective. So he, that's the sense in which he knows that these individuals like music because he can he can abstract himself into their positions. But he doesn't know why they like music because he doesn't experience the same experience that those individuals do when they're listening to whatever music they're listening to. And that is something that extends, you know, for for autistic or Asperger's people or whatever, it's that, that, uh, that methodology extends basically to every domain of life that involves interacting with or trying to understand people. For me, it's, it's the same thing with the emotional, empathetic, sympathy kind of axis. Learning how people infer emotions like it's never it's never come intuitively for me it doesn't come intuitively for autistic people's you know I'm sure many of you are aware and so it's a matter of kind of taking bits of pieces of evidence and and learning experience and building that up into an algorithm to say okay this person is in state x and they have feelings y and so okay output is z if, if I were in their position, this is what I should, you know, it's, and of course, it's always imprecise because people are so different and you can never boil these things down to math equations, which again is why PVK is saying like, he doesn't really know women because that, that, that connection is just not there or it can't happen or whatever. And you know, I, I feel the same way. That's why I, I was saying in that, in that video, uh, way back in the day when I was talking about you know, my personal experience with this, that I would say I have sympathy, but not empathy. The the empathy is kind of like the natural, the mirror neurons, the reflections, that thing that comes very naturally to most human beings. Uh, but I can elicit sympathy. And that that's the sympathy is, is basically my shorthand for applying the algorithm. So a lot to resonate with there. It, then to expand kind of on the, the uh, what would you say, the right brain taste of autistic people. I think there's something to the idea that repetition plays a really strong role in this. If you look at the development of autistic kids, they will often perform very repetitive tasks, you know, stacking a bunch of blocks together and then taking them all apart and doing it all over again, playing with Legos in certain ways. And what really influenced this for me, you know, when I grew up, I think was video games 
because video games are extremely repetitive. You're often doing the same task over and over again. One of the games that the series that I was into so much as a kid was Pokemon. And you battle, you, you, you perform countless wild Pokemon battles and battles against other trainers with Pokemon and all of this sort of stuff. And it's extremely repetitive. And what 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 makes it so much like candy like for autistic people is you can just run that algorithm over and over again. And because that that algorithm is a steady stream of dopamine, because it's a video game, they're dopamine generating machines. It it just you just keep going. You go on and on and on and on until you totally defeat every aspect of the game. You explore every nook and cranny. All your Pokemons are level 100 or whatever, whatever it is. That that is why that works so well. So there's you know there's some debate over why video games may you know turn people more autistic, so to speak. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on that, but it absolutely does. It, it absolutely does catch the people who already had some predisposition towards that. You know, people like myself, I definitely had a predisposition towards that. And there's lots of other, uh, lots of other guys I do. And then the connection with music, because Homath specifically mentioned music. A lot of video game music compared to normal music is number one, it's very repetitive. And number two, it almost never has lyrics or, or anything sung. So it, it, as far as the the non, what would you say, the, the the repetitiveness of it, that comes in, well, first of all, these tracks are shorter because if you're exploring a world for two hours and this this music is going to play over and over and over because it's 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 part of the environment. It's not its individual its own individual element. It's just part of the environment. So it's just there. Um and which which wraps it directly into the actual tasks that you're performing when you're in the video game, when you're when you're battling trainers over and over and over through some uh, through some cave or something in Pokemon, you're hearing the same music over and over and over. And so these the music gets inherently wrapped up in the repetition, the the, the task of the repetition and the the task is inherently repetitive and the music is inherently repetitive for that reason. So that I think and, and explains sort of my taste today because I, while I I almost never play actual video games anymore, I still listen to a fair bit of video game music. A lot of that is nostalgia because it's stuff from my childhood, but a lot of that is also the repetitive aspect of it. So there's the the repetition, and then there's also the lack of vocals. And what I would say is, you know, you know, for the same reason. You know, it wouldn't make sense to have some pop ballad going in the middle of a trainer battle if you're playing Pokemon. It's what what it is. It's this relatively simple electronic melody, and it plays over and over. There's there's no lyrics. There's no words. There's none of that stuff. And I think what that that reinforces the autistic person's connection to that repetition or that kind of music. Putting lyrics in there makes it complicated and it involves humans and it involves relationality. I mean, when I was growing up for years, I, I just could not understand why, why on earth are all these stupid pop songs singing about romantic love and blah, blah, blah. They're all to a T. They're all about that. That's just stupid. Why does that, why does everybody care about it so much? <laughs> uh, I like to think I've, I've learned, I've learned to, better since then and why that's the case but that's the the frame of mind that an autistic people autistic person comes with when starting to approach these things and because at least in my case and in many autistic kids my age because we grew up with video games and being immersed in those repetitive patterns that stuff i think catches on and it's more of like a like a comfort thing it's it doesn't it doesn't invoke relationships it doesn't involve trying to to, to figure out how a girl feels or whatever, or all this stuff that home math is working through. It's just simple. It's algorithmic. Let me stay in my comfort zone. Right. So I, I don't know if all this is building to some unified theory or something. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's the case that all autistic people 
have these musical tastes that line up, but I think there could be something there given, you know, my generation having played video games and so throughout so many of their formative years could be really, uh, you know, could be really uh, influential to that end because the, the kind of music I like now is, I mean, there's the video game music, but also I like a fair bit of electronic music and that is also very repetitive. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's got some some sort of constant beat that's going on in the background. The time signature of that can vary, but it's got this kind of it's very repetitious. <laughs> now the uh, for a lot of that, not not like I I don't know. I would say definitely not all. Maybe not even fifty percent of the music I listen to is is whatever designed to. What would you say? <sighs> It's designed, a lot of this stuff is, mo most of the stuff I not listen to is, I would say it's club music. It's more like, I don't know what you would say. Uh, more more relaxed, more, anyways, I, I don't know how to describe it. But the club music part of it is, you know, that, that connection is still there because of the constant beat and stuff. And so the, 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 the club music part of it is designed to invoke a, it's it's designed to be a sidecar along with the use of recreational drugs is what it is. That's kind of the the milieu in which these these beats formed. Now I have never done any of those drugs. I don't have any desire to do any of those drugs. So that you know may, maybe makes me a bit of an odd duck compared to most you know most people who go to these raves or these clubs or whatever and they're on drugs and this this repetitive beat is just thumping through their head and it it boils down to the extent that it can even be called music anymore. It boils it down to just a primal thump, like just primal drums, whatever. We're, 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 we're totally in this, this, uh, this, this, um, why am I forgetting the word? This, 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 this spirits, this, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting this term, <laughs> but we're, we're, we're in this, this, this experience together and we're all we're all on our own drugs and we're all on our own head and this beat is just you know boom 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 so but i think the connection to video games for me is that that repetition in video games carries over because like i said electronic music is very repetitive and so i can see the connection there and then there's also i would say lyrics are much less prominent in most uh most genres of electronic music compared to say rock or something or country music try finding songs that don't have lyrics in rock or country music they're 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 out there but they're they're pretty they're pretty few so yeah i don't know i guess just some thoughts as well okay so here's here's one more thing <laughs> in in charismatic land growing up in charismatic land repetition was also a psychotechnology through a lot of these ccm songs a lot of them this is a complaint against them in many cases that they are just repetitive. It's the same lyrics over and over again, and they're not referent, and they're very simple and whatever. And I, I understand and I agree to varying extents with all of those criticisms. Versus like the older hymns, the musical structure is repetitive, but the lyrics vary and they are definitely less, Jesus is my boyfriend and more, I would say reverent worship towards God. So that element of repetition is there as well in, in the sort of, uh, you know, the church that I grew up in. So that could also be an influence of, of why my musical taste developed in the ways that they did, which I think is an interesting topic that I guess I've sort of been trying to converge and culminate on. So, yeah, let me see if there's anything else that I just say. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think I think I covered everything. So just some interesting thoughts of that. Um, the I'm trying to find more ways that I can uh, address the the autism angle and kind of my personal experience with it. And so this provided me good leverage to do that. It it feels kind of hard to do that sometimes because it is a pretty talked about subject, especially because internet you know chronically online internet people are also disproportionately autistic. So. Uh, but yeah, so I hope I hope I hope this was uh, helpful. Maybe just some some thoughts off the top of my head.